morning, welcome to our Wednesday communion. We normally hold a service at the church every week, uh, but we're online because uh, we can't use our building. So if this is the first time you join with us, uh, then you're welcome. Uh, and uh, I trust and I pray that you'll have a sense of God's presence as we journey through this service uh, together. We, uh, as a bit of background, uh, used the liturgical readings from the previous Sunday uh, as we think and reflect on God's word uh, together and we're also going to be a little bit liturgically based being at home uh, we're all in different rooms but we come and we're together and so part of our togetherness will be that we'll be able to share words and say the same words uh, together as we uh, meet and uh, those words will appear uh, on uh, the screen as we go through uh, or you can just download them if you quickly click back onto the Facebook page uh, and you can click on the link and open them up uh, in front of you as well. So as we gather, shall we just bow our heads for a moment, just in a moment of quiet and in stillness as we come into God's presence. So as we go through, if you would use the words in blue as they appear on the screen. So loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith to come with hearts of praise and gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing together a song. The words will appear on the screen. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. One with each other, Jesus is here. It'd be helpful if you would sing along with me so it's not just me singing at you because those who go to Clarence know that I don't have a particularly great voice, so you'd have to sing up at home. As I say, we've been using different readings from the lectionary as we journey through. And one of the readings, one of the readings from last Sunday was from 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I want to read those words to you. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him over king of Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? And Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. 
When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, made him pass in front of Samuel, but Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor the Lord has chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all your sons? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he's tending sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. I guess this is likely to be one of the stories that you remember from Sunday school. Saul has been king of Israel, but he's been rejected by God because he's turned away from God. And so God chooses David. Not because of what he looks like. He didn't measure up to the expectation of what they thought a king should be. He wasn't towering above everybody else. But instead, God looks at David and he looks at something else. He looks at David's heart. In other words, God looks at what is central in his life and what place God has in his life. Do you know, this week as a church and churches all around our nation are exploring what does it mean to be church? We're having to do things differently. The events of this week mean that actually we're not in a church building. We don't have a worship band to lead us. We don't have video projection. You've not even got people sitting around you this morning as we come and gather for communion together. Some of you haven't even come to church or gathering with your Sunday best on. You've come in your PJs. Everything's stripped away. Everything that was on the outside has been moved. And we're left looking at what is on the inside. What's at the inside of our church? What's in the inside of our hearts? It should be God. The heart of our focus is God. And that leads into our fellowship and our unity one with another. We gather because we want to gather with God and God's people. We're also still learning what it means to be able to love one another online and in a different way. The love of church is going to be so evident at the moment, isn't it? As we put aside self, our love for God, our love for one another, our love for the community, all of those things should come to the surface. Putting away aside ourself is the reason that we stay indoors. We put the health of others, the NHS workers, the key workers, we put them before ourselves. We only go out to buy food. We only go out for those emergency trips, those necessary trips. We only go out to care for the vulnerable, making sure they have what they need. But actually, we don't have to go out to care, do we? You can stay in and you can ring around. If you're in isolation, you know what it is to actually just the preciousness of someone to ring and just have a conversation with you, especially if you're on your own. But you may be at home thinking, well, but Steve, what can I do? What can I do? It's just me at home on my own. Really, can I make a difference? Let me remind you, David was the youngest of all the brothers. He was the smallest he was a nobody. Where was David when all of this going on initially? He was out in the field looking after the sheep. Everybody else had gone to the feast, but David, he was going to be left behind. But God chose him and God asked Samuel to anoint him. David was God's anointed. He was not self-appointed. But God had a role for him, just as God has a role and a purpose for you. And so today... My prayer is that God may use the unlikely, that God may use you. My prayer is that as we break bread, that God will remind us that we're not alone, but that we're part of a, of a town-wide church and a worldwide church that also are coming and breaking bread together. So let's pray. Almighty God, as we break this bread now, as we share together, I pray that you will move among us by your Holy Spirit. That you'll draw us into that unity one with another, but also into you. 
So in the breaking of this bread and the cup, speak into our lives now we pray, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know, as we come to sharing the bread and the cup together, I don't want to invite you just to share your faith and declare our faith together. So would you read these words with me? We say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He ascended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And so as we come to break bread, let's come with humbleness and asking for God's forgiveness. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sin. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by the temptation of the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive our sin and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. And so come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come, not because any righteousness gives you a goodness of your own to come but come because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and he gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ for we are his body. Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. He says, what I receive from the Lord, I also pass on to you that Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and we had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup. He said, This cup is a sign of a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so together we give a prayer of thanksgiving. We say, loving God, we praise and thank you for your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and ministry, announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power in the lifting of the downtrodden, the healing of the sick and the loving of the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross for the redemption of the world and for your raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory we shall share. We give you thanks for this bread and the cup, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, so that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. This we pray in his name and for his sake. Amen. I invite you where you're seated to take the bread, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ was shed for the forgiveness of sin. So we drink 
with thankful, grateful hearts. Amen. we pray we say together God of our pilgrimage you have led us to the living water refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen so we gather around the bread and the cup symbols of hope and life we're going to spend a moment where we bring before God the needs of our world our community, our family, our friends, ourselves. And so as stands before us a lit candle, to begin with a moment of silence. Pray for those who are in need. We pray for those who are sick, especially remembering those who suffered with the COVID-19. Pray for their families too at this time. Pray for our NHS staff. Pray for our key workers, our teachers, our dustmen. Pray for all of those, Lord, that are responsible at the moment for needing to work to help this community and our communities through this real tough time. Pray and remember those who have lost their jobs, who are now without work. For those who each day now will struggle and just fear what tomorrow may bring, bring your peace. And so we pray for our families, our friends, our church. Father God, show us who we maybe ought to pray for and to phone today. And prompt in our hearts that desire to do just that. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In a moment we're going to close with some words together. But before we do so, can I just remind you that if you've been doing our Lent course on a Sunday, then if you go to our website page, you can download the booklet uh, the, the manual and we're going to meet on zoom at uh, about half past seven uh, this evening and uh, you're welcome the codes are all on our website you can log in uh, and join with others as we continue uh, our studies uh, together we're going to come back on sunday morning for an online service uh, that starts at half past ten you can pick up the video on uh, youtube or you can pick that up on our facebook pages but if you want to join with others before and after, we use Zoom to have a time of fellowship and conversation together uh, to catch up with one another, but also afterwards just to maybe just talk about God's word and, and, and has the message, has that live and it has that applied to our lives, as well as having an opportunity for just corporately praying together. You're welcome to join us on that uh, as well. Details all through, as I say, our church website and our Facebook uh, pages. If you've got a prayer request and you'd like us to be praying for you, then please feel free to uh, email those in. You can use office at cpbc, that's the initials of our church, office at cpbc.co.uk uh, and we'll pick those up. Our website also says that if you are self-isolating or you need help, please contact us in any way and we can help you with whatever we can do. Uh, there's also a spiritual guide, a link on there to a spiritual guide. If you're self-isolating for 14 days, uh, that you can use uh, link through from the Baptist Union of Scotland but for now we're going to draw this time of uh, worship to a close so may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service and the joy of the Lord fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you always Amen and so as we close Go in peace to reflect Christ as you live for him. In the name of Christ. Amen.
can make those phone calls just to encourage others around us in the church our neighbours our friends <coughs> that didn't work did it let me go repair that 